Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath and TribecaMath.com. I want to look at some problems today, uh, or this particular problem. This is a unique problem. It was sent to me from a student on an MTEL practice exam. It's part of a series of problems that I've been putting up recently. This one involves number sense and operations, particularly with decimals, fractions. And when we think about decimals and fractions, we always I always want you to think about percents as well. But uh, let's take a look at the problem. First, we always want to look at the problem. And uh, when we first look at a problem, you always want to look to see what are the clues. What clues does it tell us? So, so let's see. I'm going to read over the problem here. Which of the following decimals is equal to 1 over 50 plus 1 over 2,000 plus 1, 9 over 1 million? And then it gives us these answer choices. Now. I read this over and right away I see decimals, fractions, and then an answer in decimals right here. So I know this has a lot to do with fractions and decimals. And uh, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking fractions, decimals, percents. Does this have anything to do? Does this have anything to do with the Fabulous Five? You're looking at, when you read these problems, you're looking for the fabulous five, and that is one over one, the first fraction, which is equal to 1.0, which we often think of as, as one whole or 100%. You are also looking for this common fraction, one over two, aka 0.5, and we all know 0.5 as 50%. But often, you see this one, 1 over 3, one of the big fabulous 5, and 1 over 3 is 0 0.33 repeated, but for now we're just going to think of it as 33 and a third percent. You also see this one big time on exams and tests and open response questions, 1 over 4. 1 over 4, as we all know, is 0 0.25. That's, that's a 2. doesn't look like a 2, but it's a 2. Um, and that's equal to 25%. But if we're thinking about one-fifth, and that's our last of the fabulous five, um, this would be 0 0.2 or 20%. Now, why are these so important? Well, if we look at the... Now, why are these so important? Well, if we look at the exam looking for the fabulous five. Think of the fabulous five as the root. Now we can examine these problems with the fabulous five in mind. Let me switch colors for a moment. Uh, let me pick this, uh, the red, that's good. Study this problem with the red. Well guess what, when I look at one over fifty I see one fifth. And when I look at one, one over two thousand I see one half. And when I look at 9 over 1, <laughs> I don't see anything. <clears throat> I mean 9 over a million. But the truth is, I actually do. 9 over a million is just like 1 over 1 times 9. But let's start with 1 fifth. 1 fifth is equal to, we said, 0 0.2. Now, it's not 1 fifth, is it? Because it has that, uh, it has that 0 here. All that means is we add a zero here. You bump the decimal over one space because there's one zero. So the new answer would be 0 0.02. Okay, so that gets me that first one. So if I know that this is one, if I know that um, 1 50th has 0 0.2, I can look at my answer choices because remember, we're always looking at our answer choices, seeing if, they're, if things line up. And I can see right away that if my answer has to have 0.02 in it, and A does not, and B does not, wow, I just saved myself, I just increased my probability by 50% by eliminating those two choices. Okay, so now we have this second one, 1 over 2,000, which I said we're going to use 1 half as the root. So that's point, um, let me move that over a little bit. That's point 0.5, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's 0.5. And we have how many zeros here? Let's take a closer look. 
one, two, three, which means move this over one, two, three spaces, drop it, one, two, rewrite it. One over 2,000 is really the same as 0 0.0005. Oh, that was nice. And then our last one, now this is that tricky one because I said, you know, 9 over 1 doesn't look like anything. Well, 9 over 1 is just like 1 over 1. 1 over 1 is equal to 1. Well, if 1 over 1 is equal to 1, 9 over 1 is equal to 9. So if we rewrite that as 9, and then we look to see how many zeros there are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that means we're going to move this over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, drop it, that's a decimal, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now if I go and I, I add all those up, and there's a way to add them up, you first you go to that first row, you get a 0. Then you do the second row, you get a 2. Oh, I butchered this one. <laughs> you do this one here, and it's a 0. You add the 5, that's a 5. 0, 9. Okay, I butchered it. Point is, though, if you, use, if you look for the fabulous 5, and you're really close and really diligent with your work, you're going to get the answer. And the key is to take your time, not rush. You will get the answer. Just give it time. Um, this is the fabulous five. Wanted. That's right. Fabulous. Oops. Fabulous five. There's also the magnific magnificent seven. If you're thinking about magnificent seven in terms of fractions. That would be um, one eighth would be added to that list. One eighth is equal to 0 0.125, or um, we could think of this as uh, 12 and a half percent. And the last one um, is one over 10, which comes up sometimes, and we think of that as 10 uh, percent, 10 percent, or 0.1 really one over one over ten is is another version of one over one just a slight variation in the opposite direction but hither nor thither we are talk today about the fabulous five we looked at um, this problem here and if I if I totally wipe away everything if you relook at it again you realize that this has using the fabulous five can help you solve this problem you also want to you also want to have an understanding of place value and understanding of how to add um, decimals that go into uh, um, more than just the first two significant digits. But I think if you remember these core fractions right here, because this is what we're talking about, and this is what this problem is testing to see if you understand and know. Do you know the core fabulous five fractions? Are you able to take these core concepts apart to whole and look at these unusual fractions that we never use and make sense of them? And the answer should be, Yes! Yes, I am! Okay, team, thanks for watching. Again, this is another video from GoMath.com. Hi, team. Take advantage of some of the upcoming MTEL workshops in Harvard Square on May 5th, 2012, and in the Framingham area on May 6th. I hope you can make it. Once again, this is Chris from GoMath.com. Let's dance and